be running, 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 no relay, I really got new but uh, I be money, 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 my beanie, little bitch, I don't do response. Show it, do be at the doobie, your boo wanna true me, she told you she fit. Oh yeah. I tried to do the little, the little thing, uh, it, it, whatever. Trippy Red Skin has released his new album today called Life's a Trip. Um, I'm assuming he mean these drugs are a trip too, because the album cover is actually really good. I like the the artwork for this shit is dope. I love it to be honest with you. album covers and album artwork for a while now have kind of been underappreciated. I feel like a lot of them have been more on the basic side. Um, I really like the Cole. Uh, I really like the J Cole cover we got this year. I like cartoony album covers. I don't know. They just feel more creative. You can put more in them. Uh, the last Trippy Red album I listened to was A Love Letter to You Too. Uh, in my opinion, pretty underwhelming listen. Wasn't the best thing in the world. Wasn't the worst thing either. I think the thing that I want to get from Trippy Moore is just the melody. I don't really need that much. I'm not looking for lyrics. I'm just looking for the melody. I'm looking for the flow. I'm looking for how well he can adjust to the beats. So that's all I really want. If he does well on that front, then this to me will be a pretty enjoyable project. Track number one, Together. Yeah, yeah. I gotta keep it together, no tweaking now. Ah, who's your soul? Some, you know, sometimes when you yawn, you really feel like you need to get that stretch, but also more, uh, more of your voice comes out. And you just like. Ah! It feels like he wants to get all of his energy out with his voice, and I, I think it sounds pretty organic, as weird as it might sound. Yeah, we gotta pull it together. Right, that first song just sounds like you know i really gotta keep it together because my mind's being split in all these different directions and you know i need to fight my demons so i need to be of sound mind and body track number two we got taking a walk it may not seem like it right now but like these tracks so far it's only been two of them i like them just like i said because they have a melody to them i mean at least trippy red has like a formula that he's going for in the way he's rapping over the track Again, his lyrics aren't anything crazy. From what it seems, this is kind of a somber project so far. I know that's kind of like the marketability. You cater to sad kids now. I know, I'm not saying he may not be sad, or he may be. I'm just saying it seems to be a popular thing nowadays to just talk about how depressed you are, how down you are. But I really do like these tracks so far for the melody and that bullshit ass ah that trippy red keeps doing track number three wish that features trippy red well, obviously I'm eating. I wish you would keep going. Keep going. I didn't mean it like that. Shut up. Production on this track sounds not so hip hop, but I do still enjoy it. I like his reference. I like when artists reference Kurt Cobain too, um, especially when they're talking about a, a kind of a depressed mood or state. Uh, I don't like it in the way that you know I don't I don't want Kurt Cobain only to be referenced for his depression, which it seems to be uh, a thing of popularity to reference him for that reason because he did so much more for music, Nirvana, just for that realm itself. But uh, I get why they're referencing him in this context. This was also a mix, so I'm also really curious to hear what the original was. Track number four, Missing My Idols. That shit into your mind just so you know though. Sucker free living, I'ma say that that's the motto. Oh, this is bomb, a double XO so freestyle. Alright. You a bitch like Tony Romo. Niggas came what did Tony Romo do to you? Yeah, I didn't really love this on uh, his uh, freestyle for double XO. Still don't love it now. Sounds better with a beat behind it, honestly, but the beat's not crazy, so it's just okay. Track number five, Forever Sh- Oh, wait. Dog, it's- Forever is already in forever. You don't need to put ever after forever. Oh my god.
sometimes that I would really appreciate that echoey effect on Young Thug's voice because it would make the track seem so much more spacey and dark, um, which is what I feel the aesthetic of the track is kind of going for. I just feel like Young Thug just is over the track as opposed to being in it. I want him to be in it. Oh, wow. You gonna make me fall in love for a while. That good. I've been out there as I last for a while. Yeah. Baby girl got me so obsessed for a while. Yeah. This, this, this is it. This is it. This voice. This great. track i like it um again with the exception of young thug and reese i would prefer them be mixed into the track as opposed to them sound like they're layered over it but trippy red's voice sounds really good don't mind his verse other than that fucking bust all over your whole face and that colgate line don't and i guess it's just meaning like you know you gonna love me through all this shit at the end of the day are you gonna be there forever and ever god damn man y'all all 20 plus next track is bird shit why? Did he, did he just try to make himself sound like a like a crow? He's really trying to make himself sound like a bird. What the fuck? Oh, a little bitch, she call me Patty. Got some American hoes, they call me Daddy. Slaughter your daughter. I mean, it's not really a hook. I think, for the most part, Trippy Red does that little yeah shit with his voice to kind of keep the song going in place of lyrics because he might not have anything else to write at that moment. So to kind of get more, um, I guess, duration out of a song, he kind of will do that yelping thing. I guarantee if somebody wanted to cut that part out of the song, they can make a good 30 seconds of him doing that in this track alone. I'm um, gonna get the track too. You know, all the other bullshit doesn't matter. You know, I'm doing this. I'm fucking bitches that call me pappy, and you know, other chicks that call me daddy, and um, I'm I'm spending, I'm making millions, and it, I just you know, gang shit, a whole lot of yeah. Not my favorite track though. Track number seven, bang. This one might be good. I can't do this anymore. Trying not to be ignored. Let them saw I'm tripping. I can't hear that part. That's what I like. The random changes. You want one right now? I might stand for the rest of the. No, I'm not gonna stand. She gonna let that shit bang for me, yeah. She gonna let that shit bang for me, yeah. That's what I wanted. See how you got the bass drop after the start of the song. It has so much. But this shit is hot. Bang for me, yeah. Oh shit. Baby, oh baby, yes, come right. My sisters and my nephews and my nieces love them all. I get it, you have a family. Bang for me! Right now, it's between Bang, and I like the mix of Wish. Yeah, but I get this track, you know, basically saying how all these things are piling up, basically. He even says in the hook, at some point, when it rains, it really pours. Um, I like this track because, you know, he's kind of being more realistic and explaining himself, like how all these things being added to you can really put a damper on you. And it's funny because damper, it, you know, is kind of like saying that it's like a like a like a constant shroud of or a constant cloud over your head where there's nothing but rain pouring all over you when it rains it really pours so i get it track number eight how you feel i like that track only thing that was missing for me was a point because it sounds like question mark the song like how you feel and he never gets kind of a resolution or an answer to his question it's just never ending outpouring questions of the kind of i've kind of the same thing i like how he asks how he's supposed to sound it's kind of like if i'm pouring my heart out is this what i'm supposed to sound like is this what i'm supposed to do track number nine dark knight dumbo featuring travis scott i just 
listened to this song for the first time a week ago. So it sucks because I didn't know the album was coming out this week. Uh, we're just going to skip it. I'm not going to play it. I'm not. I don't care how great both of their performances were on the song. I don't care. I'm not going to play it. Worlds, my planet, my home. Like I said, I'm not playing it. Track number 10, UK, UKA, UKA, or Uka Uka. UK, whatever. Hey, that I hate y'all. Hey, that I hate Same reason why I hate y'all. It sounds like a track he just made on the fly. It honestly sounds like a diss record. Um, I don't know who he, could be who he could be dissing, but it sounds like a diss record. It sounds like he made it on the fly. It doesn't sound like he put that much work or effort into it. Um, it doesn't really, it sounds a little rushed, I guess you could say, even his flow. Uh, it sounds like it's struggling to maintain the pace with the beat or the beat struggling to maintain the pace with Trippy Red, whichever one it is. It feels like they're not on par with one another. Track number 11, Shake It Up. It's only a minute. And a half, so you might want to start. <laughs> Call him boy. Okay. Run up that side. Shake it side by side. Call him boy. All right, I like that. Like the twerk team. Yeah, she gon' shake it like a rhino. Rhino. I'm a big dog, just like Kojo. Kojo. Sing to that bitch like I'm by twin sister. Side by side. Shake it side by side. Twin sister. Gave me melody. I like it. Gave me melody for the track. Wasn't what didn't drag on for too long. It could have been a song that would have been bad had it gone on for longer than the two minutes that he allowed. So I think he gave it the appropriate time. Track number twelve. We not we not doing that. Just track number twelve. My songs always apply to my real life right now. I mean they should. What are you talking about? I just keep it pushing. I ain't worried about the mad folks. If a nigga test me, I'ma reach up in his bag, though. When that's with me, I used to feel alone, but I know my brother's soul is with me. I know Oompa's soul is with me. Every day. Again, this is another track that I don't mind. It's kind of just like, it's not, it doesn't, it doesn't, st it doesn't overstay his welcome. It doesn't, it's not way too long. He gives his verse and gives the point of it. Knowing that he isn't the best lyrically, I mean, I, I'm sure he can be better, but or give himself the opportunity to rap more. But I just think he gives himself enough time to get it in there and then get out. I don't think he stays too long. I think he's good at getting out just before he gets old. And he says, "Oops, uh, revenge." Basically, that's his brother. So he's doing all this for the sake of his brother. Feels empowered thinking about his brother. He feels empowered knowing that he's doing these things for his family, for himself. The revenge is basically. You know, I'm assuming anyone that may have hated on them collectively, he and his brother, the revenge is him being successful now and still keeping his brother's name alive. Track number 13 is Gore. Yeah, I said, even if it kills me, even if it kills me, I'm on my mama for that drama. I'm gonna keep getting these commas on my mama. Got a nigga falling like a Migo dollar. Water on my neck, you try to take it, you get so gotta keep the peace gotta keep the peace away it get real pete's sake i got that that's funny the beat does go into a darker version of itself almost or i guess the the drums or the bass start to come a little bit more alive near the end of the track but i don't think it does enough for the song that trippy should have been able to do himself i just think that you know he comes in and gives a pretty red a, pr a pretty regular verse i mean at this point we know what trippy red's here to do we know what he's you know saying that he wants to do it's nothing different from anything that he said before so that's why it really doesn't have that much weight and it's not really a reason for me to listen to the track because the instrumental isn't that crazy trippy's voice the way he utilizes it on this track isn't that crazy and i just don't think what he raps about is really anything that i need to hear again track number 14 underwater fly zone <laughs> You know, he kept saying, I don't have a shoulder to cry on anymore. I know this probably isn't the case for the album, but it'd be really funny. Well, not funny, but it'd be really funny if by the beginning of this project, he's saying that he needs to be rid of his demons. But by the end of the project, he comes to like this realization, like, 
my demons were actually my friends and since i got rid of them all now i need a shoulder to cry on because i have no one like that would be really not only ironic but that would actually make the album experience a little bit better to me but i'm, I'm sure he doesn't mean that but it's a possibility so if he says that i said it here first anyway this album not bad um i didn't love all of it especially this last track being five minutes long and the second half in my opinion being a little bit weaker than the first half first half being a little bit more experimental like it, i mean as far as like it's explosive material i like how it's more a little bit more expressive maybe because having uh, not heard trippy red as far as an album experience for so long hearing him again getting into those upper registers getting into those uh those patterns of his voice that are a little bit more vibrant explosive and you know expressive kind of make the listening experience a little bit more new and fresh by the time you get to the second half of the album you may already be used to it so maybe that's why it drags out a little bit more and maybe that's why the second half just has less meaning overall i really like the album cover too um it these in my opinion being different versions of either trippy or these being the versions of trippy or his demons or the things in his head that give him you know some kind of solace um it, it's almost like by the time we get to the end of the album all of these things that are around him on the album cover no longer exist the final track could also be a tribute to his brother saying that since you've left me i have nobody to cry on i have no one to be there with me that could also be a possibility a couple of these tracks actually sound like ballads a couple of them actually you know sound pretty good pretty explosive pretty uh mixed very well sonically they sound great uh tribute Red's voice is mixed in these pretty well I, I don't mind him screaming every two seconds although at some points it does get annoying because some of the screaming does feel like a distraction for lack of lyrics or lack of overall vocal uh complexities like the dude doesn't really know how to go anywhere else with his voice other than yeah and i get that that's his thing but i feel like it's never utilized in in a in a in a musically uh pleasing way i don't feel like it's really utilized in a way that's meant to enhance the overall uh experience of the way the music might sound i feel like sometimes it's just a detour i'm about five to seven songs impressed out of 14. another way i could describe the album is him saying life's a trip kind of feels like he feels like he just took a hit and that's what life is life is a, a, a drug that you need to kind of just get used to you're on drugs at some point you can say that whatever substance that you're using at the time could be defined as a trip into another space into another land or whatever life could technically be the same thing although i'm not expecting anything lyrically some of these tracks feel like they're not based in any kind of idea or topic at all again i don't need you to be the most lyrical spiritual person out there but at the same time, for some of your tracks to be rooted in some kind of idea, I don't think it's too much to ask. Still, I think Trippy Red could improve a little bit more as a rapper, but I am impressed with his uh, capability so far as a singer. I don't mind him crooning or screaming or yelping or all these other things that he's doing with his voice. It actually sounds pretty good to me when they're not used, in my opinion, as a vocal detour from the fact that there isn't really much to see from these tracks from a lyrical point of view or a conceptual point of view. And I mean, again, there doesn't need to be one here. I mean, the tracks do carry a similar vibe and a similar experience. While I do like the album and I do like a lot of where Trippy Red is coming from as far as his uh, point of view as a singer or i guess you could call him a vocalist the album feels like a plane ride from one destination and it turns around while it's in the sky and comes right back down to the same destination i don't feel like it really goes anywhere sure it feels like we get high it feels like we get off the ground it definitely picks up but i don't feel like it lands anywhere that we haven't been before and while the album has a bit of a somber feeling to it in the background and through tribute red's lyrics i don't really think he explores the topic enough for me to say the album carries a depressing feeling because there are some tracks where he's a little bit more vibrant or happy or explaining himself from a point of view where he's either in love or feeling like uh, the, the weight of the world is on his shoulder not really depressing just a little bit stressed that's how i guess i could describe it it's a trippy red that's a little bit more stressed out but not really rooted in any kind of deep depression in my opinion should be red life's a trip so i'm feeling on it i did enjoy some of these songs but for the most part eh did you enjoy it did you despise it let me know in the comment section down below i'll see y'all next time thank you for watching and i'm out life's a trip <laughs>